All right, what's going on, everybody? Uh, it's Leland LaVinci here, as usual. Um, I hope everybody's doing okay. Um, you know, with the new uh, Omicron, uh, Omicron, however the fuck you say it, um, virus and the storms and all the crazy weather and all the crazy people out there. Um, and I just hope all you guys are okay. Um, yeah, um, basically I wanted to kind of, it's kind of a mashup. I just kind of want to talk to you about um, why I love Reason so much. And uh, I'll just kind of make a beat as uh, as we go along. Um, you know, I started um, working on beats, um, I want to say 2003. And my first uh, doll that I used was um, FL Studio 3.5 when it was called Fruity Loops, right? And while FL Studio is near and dear to my heart because it was my entrance, it was my gateway to music, um... You know, I expanded. And the uh, other one that I came across was uh, one called Cubase VST32, uh, but I never actually got to use it. And then I came across Reason. And I think it was Reason 3 or 4 at the time, right? And since then, uh, you know, most dolls have pretty much come a long way. And Reason is not an exception. Uh, and it's and it's definitely come a long way. Um, but for some reason, sometimes it gets a bad name because I think people look at it and you know think that it's complicated. But it really it's not complicated at all. And you know, to people who have or to assume that type of notion. The truth is, is that we are all beginners at some point. You know, when we start something new, everyone's a beginner, right? That doesn't mean you can't learn and, uh, you know, get good at something. Um, outside from the obvious, I would say, um, you know, the obvious being, look, you never want to be... You never want to put yourself in a situation where as a beat maker or producer or engineer or, um, you know, whether that be audio engineer or mixing engineer, mastering, you never want to put yourself in a situation where you're unsure how to do something, right? And of course, it's never a bad thing to master, you know, master a doll. So if like your favorite doll is FO Studio, master that. If it's Studio One, master that. If it's reason master that um but what i would also encourage is that you at least learn fundamentals um of other dolls because the truth is is technology is not and i repeat it is not infallible uh, just because you go in and you assume that whatever it is that you're using is going to work doesn't mean that it will always uh be that way doesn't mean that it will always work and won't have issues. Um, so outside of, of that, um, what I've personally found about Reason is that for me, um, it forces me to uh, think outside the box in terms of creativity, right? Um, as confusing as people say it is and as straightforward as it honestly is it's not so straightforward that um it makes it very mundane or routine like every time i open reason like i come across something new or something you know interesting uh with other dolls for me personally it just seems kind of straightforward you know fl studio has the patcher um I don't know how new that is. I think maybe the last two, the last two or three versions is they had the patcher. But, um, 
you know, outside of that and, you know, automation, being able to adjust the uh, oscillators and things that they have with the, uh, you know, the, the built-in um, instruments, that's really as far as it goes. You know, you make your pattern, you make your melody, and that's it. And for our generation, you know, that sounds cool because, you know, we live in a time where immediacy and immediate gratification is everything. But it really isn't. I don't think it is. Uh, And I think it makes it very routine, very mundane, very boring. But the thing about reason, and I'll try to show you... uh, Trying to show you. Uh, all right, see this? This right here is the. It's called a combinator. And basically, when I adjust one of these, it will adjust it somewhere else. Let's see. Uh, see how when I turn, like for example, this, this punch, it changes this. All right. Now, you might be saying, okay, who cares? You know, who gives a fuck? It's not the fact that it changes this. It's the fact that you can literally build an entire rack for sounds using these combinators. And it can be as simple or as complex as you want it to be. And I'll just flip the rack around. Um... Once you learn how to do this, it looks confusing. It looks very confusing. But for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. Everything is labeled, right? Most things are labeled. There are some things that get kind of confusing, like when you're using the the spider uh, patcher, um, which I really don't use, but I need to learn. Um... But once you learn how to use these, these uh, cables and these routing and these tools, man, the things you can do in this this fucking program is crazy, right? And that's if you want to expand and do different things, you know? I wouldn't imagine, you know, some people are, some people love stuff like that, but I wouldn't imagine someone jumping in reason of trying to learn how to uh, do the routing for the cables and everything like that. But if you do, more power to you because that will open up so many more doors for you that um, the simple version of reason or any other dog can give you, right? I know that they have, uh, I know that Bitwig has something similar to this and it's very, very, very complex. to make your own sounds and uh, control voltages and things like that. Um, but, I mean, look at it. Look at this. It looks like a real fucking studio. Right? You know, you have your rack mounts, you have your compressors, your equalizers, your limiters, you know, all this. And the other thing is, is your instruments are attached to the rack. Right? And just because they're touching doesn't mean that they're connected. And I think that's why people see this and they get confused right just because this is touching is connected to this echo like visually doesn't mean that they're connected through cabling see this is actually going to the master obviously because this is an instrument it's going to the master section which is all this Right, it's where you want it to go. It's it's the equivalent of um, the master um, fader on uh, FL Studio, right? Uh, let me see. So this is Thor. Um, something that I still have not been able to figure out how to use, but uh, very customizable, extremely extremely customizable. Um, this is the back of it. Uh, these are the modulations, the uh, 
the CVs and everything like that uh, down here. And like I said, you don't have to mess with this stuff. To make to make a beat, you don't have to mess with this stuff. What I am saying is that learning how to use this makes things uh, more interesting. Makes it to me it makes it a little bit more fun, and uh, you know you get more control uh, over uh, you know how you route things and things like that. Uh, let me see. I need to turn my keyboard on. Usually connects. So. Try to close it one more time. Sorry about that, guys. Usually, audio, usually, uh, auto connects. But yeah, look, look at, look at my desktop. Like, I have no issue teaching myself using Ableton, Renoise, MPC, I have the uh, MPC Retro. All right, there it goes. Yeah, it's connected. See, it's right there. Yeah, I have no issue teaching myself those things because I want to make sure that I'm prepared. All right, so, um, okay, so what I was basically saying is that it forces me to step out my comfort zone. And what I find often is that um, I end up creating things that I never thought that I would make before. And for me, that's awesome because I don't want to be just a beat maker. I hope and I pray that I'm able to have the opportunity to produce songs for not just hip hop artists, but for dance, pop, you know, uh, and even country. Like I like I don't care. I just I I enjoy music, and I want to make sure that um, I'm not putting unnecessary limitations on myself. Um, but for the sake of this, because I know you guys are probably waiting on me to start something, um, I'll just, um, I'll make a plug type beat, just to show you, just to kind of show you what you can do. the stock sounds and reason you you can't you can't touch them like at all there's there's no doll that has better stock sounds than uh than reason does like by far um, and they all have things that they're good at like the piano roll and the step sequencer in fl studio is by far the best one out But on the flip side, in terms of sounds, I don't think their stock sounds are near as good as as uh, reasons is. Uh, I think the pad. I'm gonna try to find. Yes, I have reason. This is like a organ. 
rack mount. Um, let's see if I can find it. All right, so this is a this is called a player. It's called scales, scales and chords. It's, um, I guess kind of equivalent to something like uh, Cthulhu or uh, Scalar or what's the other one? Captain Chords or something like that. The thing is, is though you can actually play the instruments uh, using this. Uh, see that right now, the C major. I'm pressing one key right now. Pressing one key. And you can adjust how many notes you want. I found the melody like already and if honestly if you're one of those people who who loves to praise the idea of getting things done quick you can do that you saw how quick I came up with that melody and I'm gonna use that as my main, main uh, my main progression let me see you can do inversions open chords you can add a uh, octave down like a low note see there's one here and there's a good one you can add one up It's not that hard <laughs> at all. All right, I'm gonna lay this down. Uh, this right here is the quantize record. It will quantize while you record. Hopefully it doesn't, hopefully OBS doesn't crash on me while I'm doing this, but if it does, I will just um, save this video, start another one, and I'll combine them in the, uh, the arranger but here we go the main melody the main progression down and you saw how easy that was as soon as i threw this in here and i threw the scales and chords player easy uh, yes that's how i name my fucking beats i don't i don't really fucking care <laughs> i don't i don't make time to sit here and figure out what the name of it is i just type some shit let me know in the comments if you just name your beats random shit like i do then you try to come up with a, a, a great purposeful ass name later on after you export it. That's what I do. Um, another thing I wanted to mention to you guys is that Reason, this DSP, it has it has never ever gotten halfway, and Reason has has never in terms of the program itself has never crashed on me. I don't know how it is with like if you're running a bunch of stuff at the same time in the computer crashes, but reason has never ever crashed on me. Like sometimes like in the past it might stop and it might say that the uh audio driver stopped working, but the program has never closed on me even when that window pops up i can just press okay 
And if I hadn't saved it, I could save it and I can move on. But it's never crashed on me. And that's one thing to keep an eye on as I'm making this beat is watch the DSP and you will see what I'm talking about. It will, it will never reach like close to maximum at all. Like maybe two or three, two or three lines, but that's it. All right, so back to this. I got it saved. I'm gonna try to. All right, so you click this like when you want to browse the different sounds. You can either drag them on. Or you can just press this arrow. There, there you go. That's a plug one. This is what I was talking about in terms of levels. You see this up here? You can't see the numbers. You can see the levels, but you can't see the numbers. So all those tutorials and shit where people telling you to put it at negative 15 and, and negative six and negative 24, fuck all, fuck all that. That's what I like. That's what I preach about reason is because you can see the levels. You can see if they're green. You can see if they're red, uh, yellow, or you can see if they're red trains you and teaches you to use your ears and that's the most important thing because when somebody's listening to a beat especially producers even producers nobody's gonna be like oh you put that melody at, at negative 18 db i can tell it sounds really nice no they're no the fuck they're not no one's gonna say that if the loudness is decent let me correct that loudness doesn't mean that it sounds good but that's how we perceive sound but if it sounds good if it's mixed well then keep it moving you know keep it moving we don't need to um stress about numbers sorry i'm uh i got a text All right. Oh, shit. All right. Um, yeah. You see the levels, but there's no numbers. Uh, to me right now, that I think that sounds decent. Uh, so what I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to effects. You can either do what? You can choose from here or you can right click on the blank space or on top of the instrument itself what i usually do is i'll right click but for visual purposes i will do it this way for you guys so this is the reverb you can see it's all connected um, they have tons of presets tons of presets <laughs> See, that's way too much reverb. Um, this is like to control your EQ and your gate for the reverb. Let's turn this down. Alright. See how it's training, it's training me to use my ears instead of worrying about Obviously, I will do that afterwards at some point because you don't want a bunch of stuff clashing. But uh, for now, that's good. Um, so let's add piano.
that's very, very uh, intuitive. Like, it's not that complicated. Like, when people tell you reason is complicated, you have proof. It's not that complicated. this down good so you can see like sorry i accidentally kicked the mic so you can see like i have two two sounds in here and just listen to it listen to how high quality it sounds already these are stock instruments It sounds like pristine, like absolutely, like like really good. So what I'm going to do next is I kind of wanted to add a. I think I will. I'm going to add a dynamics to this. Sometimes I like to throw a, like a dynamics or like a compressor on the piano um, just to not mess with the velocities, but try to make them like kind of even. Um, in terms of in terms of level, not in terms of uh, timbre. Um, so that's why I did that. Purity. Uh, strings. Where is it?
simple. Um, I, and what I recommend, if you're gonna try Reason, get use a MIDI keyboard. Don't try to do this shit with the mouse. Uh, I will definitely say that about Reason is, it's not. You can do it. You can do it. It's just gonna be a little bit more tedious to make a beat using uh, just a mouse like FL Studio. So if you're gonna use Reason, I recommend that you get a keyboard. Um, in a 25 keys is perfectly fine. I made several beats on my 25 key uh, MIDI keyboard. Um, right now I'm using my 49. Uh, I left my other one at the studio. But uh, yeah, just uh, that's my recommendation if you're gonna try this. Just lay that down. <laughs> Texting while I was doing this, I messed up. All I do is I go Control C, this copy it, highlight it, Control J to consolidate, and that is done. Yet another number. This is really good for these kind of beats. Alright. Bet. Alright, so these are your drum computers. You can use Kong, you can use Reg uh Redrum. I don't know if they pronounce it Redrum or Redrum. Uh, I've been saying it. Uh, you can use that. There's the. Oh, you have these new ones. The. Uh, ump. Club drums and ump retro beats. What I usually do, I use reach drum. I will right click on it. I will hit reset device. That resets everything, gets rid of all the samples in here. We'll go in here, click the little folder things. And I will pick my own drum samples. Mm. I think I'll use this one. Velocity. Drum sounds might be a little bit loud right now, but I'll mix them in a second. All right, so this is what I usually do with this. I'm gonna record it, and then I'll show you what I do. Also, check this out. The GSP is not moving hardly at all. It's crazy, man. I don't know what they do, but it's like, look at this. I have three instruments, three, well, a bunch of effects, and it's not. has a lot of advantages you know that people overlook so what I usually do is when I'm making the jump pattern is I'll right click on it and I'll just do new note lane uh, like this one Velocity. all right let's record If you want to do 
16th note, you have to change it to 16th. So, I'll just write it again. It's a sampler. Gonna right click on it. We're going to where is it? Oh, reset. Clear. Clear for sampler. I'm gonna try this one. Sometimes they don't entirely work too well. We shall see.
Nothing wrong with simplicity. pretty much it in terms of the melodies and everything what i like to do is so i have one two three four five i have six drum sounds so what i'll do is i'll right click on the redrum six times create mix channel one two three four five six yeah six press tab the sounds on the uh, individual channel that way I can mix them individually is the mixer it's modeled off or it's modeled after sorry modeled after um the ssl 9000 j i believe um has everything everything is pretty much similar it has the everything it has a uh, dynamics has eq um sends obviously the faders panning and it also has the one and only master bus compressor that was very special and unique about um, SSL the company um, and their their sound you know everyone fell in love with it's uh, modeled right here um, automatically into the studio so let's go ahead and we'll mix it or you can use these uh, sometimes I use these um, we'll just use these use your ears remember use your ears to the roads this has a or dynamic I think I'll just do a dynamic actually I'm not gonna use this one I'm gonna use the pretty much 
much visual. I mean, there's numbers here, but because they're so small, you because they're so small, you tend to overlook them. Let's go back to the mixer. this um sin it's a reverb this plate sin right here uh to give it a little bit more uh like space more width just a little bit So the thing um, that you need to understand about Reason is that because it's a 64-bit 60, um, program, um, there's a lot of headroom. And a lot of uh, misconception about Reason is that if you see it in the red, that is clipping. Yeah, that's not true. When it's clipping, these two dots right here, Nothing is peaking because it would show up on the edge right here. So, almost done. I don't think I'm going to arrange it. Uh, it'll take a while. But here's the master um, effects section. They have a lot of effects here. Uh, the factory, M class, mastering patches. 
I will turn this on and we'll see how it sounds. It might not sound very good at first, but we'll fix it. By the way, this stereo imager is lovely, beautiful. Um, I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to show you, um, again, very visual um, in terms of the knobs, but it trains you to use your ears, so let's see. This is the high band. They have a lot of these, but um, just for the sake of video, I'm going to use the the default one. Um, what was I going to show you? Oh, okay. For the master bus compressor, because I love this thing. Um, trick you can use, and I've talked about this before, but when you turn it on, but because of the bass frequencies carry so much energy that it's giving the illusion of some type of pumping effect you know stuff that you would hear in like dance music um, that's because there's so much energy and the compressor is compressing everything because of all that energy now what you can do is because I used to hate this, I used to hate how it sounded and I was like well, I want my bass to be loud, but I don't want it to um, compress everything else. So this is a trick that I learned. And this is what I'm talking about in terms of the amount of things you can do in Reason. And like I said, you can be as complex as you want. Um, all right, so take this uh, envelope controlled filter. You put it on this side, the rack press the tab button and uh, just follow along you go from uh, this out the control room out to the end of the filter and then you go from the out to the dynamic side chain input and you will know that it's activated and set up when this little key light turns on all right that's all you need to do is turn it around Scroll up, you see that it's activated here too. So it's still pumping because we haven't adjusted the frequency that we want to be compressed on the master bus compressor. So this frequency knob right here, that's what I love about it. Watch what happens when I start turning this down and listen. you turned it down you selected the frequency that you wanted to compress it's only reacting to the 808 and you can see it up here
the DSC, by the way. Okay. There you have it. Don't sleep on reason, people. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's not good for your health. Um, so yeah. That's that's that is a very to me, very basic gist of the things that you can do in reason and all the crazy shit, all the crazy features, routing, complexity, you know, all the stuff that you can do in reason. Go give it a try. Go download the demo. I think you can use it for 14 days. You can do everything. You can export. You can save. You have access to all the instruments, all the sounds, um, all the effects. Um, Go try it out. Uh, I think the first month is... I think the first month is a dollar a month. And then after that, it goes up to, I think, $19. But, I mean, come on, man. A dollar, twenty dollars, that that's nothing really. And you get access to all this. So just go give it a shot, man. And again, um just have fun with it. Um This is by no means um sponsored. I'm not sponsored to make this video. I just love this program and um I think that if you give it a shot and don't um don't steer yourself away from being so comfortable um to try new things you might actually like it um and if you have any questions just uh follow me on instagram at leland vinci and i will walk you through how to do certain things and reason um just just as just as friend just as a friend you know i'm not gonna make you sign up for no stupid ass course or anything like that just hit me up or send me a message on here or leave me a comment on here and I will uh, walk you through uh, how to fix something or how to set something up or how to do something in reason. So yeah, keep making beats, y'all. Um, expand your mind, you know. Um, it's okay to, you know, like one dog more than another, but expand your mind. Don't be afraid to try new things. And uh, just have fun making music and stay creative. Um, the one thing that I appreciate about Reason is that it keeps me very creative. And um, I don't really showcase them that much, but I have beats that aren't trap beats on here. Um, maybe one day I'll share them with you guys. And they sound <laughs> they sound phenomenal. Um and the only reason I don't share them is because they're not really, uh, in terms of YouTube and Instagram, they're not really in the market. Like, you know, people don't need those kind of beats, but I enjoy making them. And sometimes we have to um, not think about consumerism so much that we forget to go back to our roots and to make music because we enjoy making music, not just for the sake of fucking money, you know. Um I don't think in and of itself there's anything wrong with money, but there's sure as hell not anything wrong with um, making the music that you want to make, you know, that you feel in your spirit and in your soul. So um, I know it was a long video, but I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, please uh, hit that, that thumbs up button for me. And, um, if you would like to see more videos on Reason or anything else, any other doll, um, just let me know. Don't forget to subscribe. You know, it obviously helps me in terms of the YouTube algorithm. And um, y'all stay safe out there. Keep making music. Expand your mind. Um, have fun. Try Reason. And I will catch y'all some other time. All right. Peace out.